It's subtle, but I can tell. I know the exact moment when I could first tell something wasn't right. I'm sure there are people in my life who would use the word paranoid to describe me, but I would call it intuition, and it's never failed me. The first alarm bell sounded last Friday evening when I received a text from my wife, Alyssa, letting me know that she would be home a few hours late as she's caught up at work. The nature of her job means days can fall behind sometimes, and it's not uncommon for her to get stuck late at work with her co-workers. However, there were two things about this that set my mind off for the rest of the evening. First, Alyssa never texts me. She always calls. I know, I know what you're thinking. Maybe she was really swamped and didn't have time to step away for a call. I know there are a number of reasons one might send a text instead of calling, but I'm telling you, I've been with this woman five years and she doesn't text. She will always find a way to slip away and make a phone call, or she will wait until she can. The second thing that caused me to double take is that she called me honey in the text message. Honey. Again, five years together and neither of us have ever called the other honey. We do babe and even dear, but never honey. In an instant, there were sirens in my head. Of course, my first thought wasn't that some entity had taken over her body. I told you, I'm not crazy, but I definitely took a moment to consider my next move. I decided I would just have to wait until she got home to put my mind at ease. In the meantime, I sent a quick, okay, love you, and tried to carry on with my night. I wish I could say that I forgot about it, but it was on my mind for what felt like hours before I apparently dozed off. I was woken up by the sound of the doorbell ringing. I checked my phone for the time, which read 9.28 p.m. The doorbell continued to ring, followed by knocking. It couldn't be my wife, I thought. She has keys to the house. We have one of those fancy doorbells that lets you see who is at the door through a tiny camera. So I navigated to the app on my phone to check as I walked to the door. For some reason, I felt a sense of anxiety as I waited for the image on my phone screen to load. At this point, I was on the other side of the door and could have just opened it or looked out of the window, but my instincts were telling me to wait for the app. It felt like it was taking way too long, even though it had probably only been a few seconds. My anxiety was ramping when, finally, it finished loading. Well, sort of. It finished loading, but the image being shown to me through the camera was just pitch black. Damn it, I thought. Technology never wants to work when you need it. I nearly fell backwards as the black screen lit up and my phone started ringing. Alyssa, it said. My wife was calling. As the heavy tension in my body faded, I yelled to the person at the door to wait one minute and I put the phone to my ear. Before I could even get a word out, Alyssa barked at me over the phone. Honey, can you get the door? I think I left my keys on my desk at work. I'm so tired. There it was again. Honey. The weight in my gut came back all at once. I wondered to myself how she drove home without her keys. I opened my mouth to ask, but my nerves dissipated once more at the sound of her voice. Jack, are you there? Please, I've had such a long day. It was her voice and I was so happy to be hearing it. She sounded stressed and exhausted, just like she said. I replied, hey babe, yeah, I'm walking to the door now. Could you just humor me for one second? I asked as I pressed the FaceTime button on my phone. It took her a moment, but soon she accepted the invite and there she was, my wife's beautiful face looking back at the phone screen and behind her was our front yard and our street. I got lost for a brief second, just staring at her before she spoke again and pulled me out of it. Jack, you're being weird. Is everything okay? With that question, my concerns from only moments ago had faded and I quickly opened the door to let Alyssa inside. I ended our call and pulled Alyssa in for a big hug. I knew at this point I must be getting on her nerves, so I let go and helped her carry her things inside. Sorry, I told her. It's been a weird day for me. A weird day, she asked, 
What happened? I considered for a moment telling her what had been on my mind, but having her here in front of me made me realise how ridiculous it all was. I waved my hand at her and told her, It's nothing now. I'm just glad you're home. Alyssa gave me a smile and a kiss on the cheek before telling me that she was going to get ready for bed. I had only just woken up from a nap, so I decided I'd stay up and try and figure out what was wrong with our doorbell camera. Before I got up to go outside, my wife let out a casual, Good night, honey. I froze. I knew I had to ask now, or it would be on my mind all night. I needed at least one answer for the weird events today. Hey, when did you start calling me that? I asked with a calm tone. Alyssa's face scrunched into a look of confusion. Calling you what? This question made me angrier than I expected. I kept my cool. Honey, I said. Alyssa looked even more confused now. She thought for a moment and then gave me a smile. Gosh, you're being so strange tonight. I've always called you that. She kept smiling, but I could detect a hint of concern behind it. I gave her a smile back to reassure her and shrugged. She took off towards the bedroom, leaving me alone with more questions than answers. I focused my mind back on the doorbell camera, hoping it would pull my thoughts away from my wife's words. I exited out the front door and scanned around for the tiny camera. Standing in front of the door, I couldn't find the camera at first and then realised why. It had been raining earlier and there was a wet leaf stuck over the lens. That's right, a leaf. I couldn't help but laugh out loud at the situation. I laughed and laughed and laughed some more. When I couldn't laugh anymore, I pulled out my phone to make double sure that the camera worked. I rang the doorbell, sorry Alyssa, to test it and opened the app on my phone. Sure enough, there I was on the screen, looking down at my phone. I still had questions, but at least I could put this one to rest. I went back inside and sat down on the couch. I still was wide awake after sleeping in the evening, so I made a mental note that I'd ask Alyssa more questions tomorrow to calm my racing thoughts. But for now, I would ask my good friend, the internet. I wasn't even sure what to search, and I'm not very tech savvy, so I started with a basic search, wife acting strange. Of course, the first few pages were links to relationship advice forums, therapist pages, and even some niche porn scattered in. It only took a few specific iterations of my original search and a bit of deeper digging before I finally found a possible answer that spoke to me. Supernatural entities. Once I went looking for it, there were pages upon pages of this stuff. I found posts from so many others who had extremely similar experiences to mine. Some users claimed demons and some claimed ghosts, but the experiences were the same. I found endless accounts of people who claimed their loved ones had been taken over by some unseen entity. It was always the same, a loved one mimicking normal behaviours perfectly, but messing up on a few small important details. Many of the stories even include the victim randomly passing out during the day, just like I had that evening. No matter the difference in the encounters, every story had the same theme. I spent the rest of the night getting lost in these stories. It felt so good for something to finally make sense after a day of unease. I don't know how long I spent on the couch, hunched over my laptop. I never saw the sun come up through my windows, so I must have fallen asleep eventually while it was still night. I woke up on Saturday, disorientated, in my bed. The first thing I did was scramble for my laptop. I was terrified Alyssa would see what I had been searching all night and have to explain myself. She'd think I was insane, but I no longer felt comfortable confronting her with questions until I confirmed some other way that she really was Alyssa. What if she had really been taken over by some kind of entity? I couldn't let it know I was onto it. I searched around frantically for my laptop before remembering that I'd been using it on the couch. Then how did I get into my bed? My memories from the night before were just a blur of the information I had spent all night reading. I couldn't remember when I got offline and went to my bed. My heart rate picked up. 
It must have happened again. That creature must have known I was learning too much and put me to sleep, just like the previous evening. I bolted from the living room, only to find my laptop sitting closed neatly on the table. Alyssa, or whatever was controlling my wife, was in the kitchen. I could hear her humming as she made her morning coffee. Terror overwhelmed me as my thoughts raced and I had realised that I didn't have many options. I had to confront her now. Don't worry, there was no way I was going to hurt my wife. I'm not crazy. I made the quick decision that I'd just ask her questions and try to read her through her answers. But what if she attacked me? I had to bring some defence. That's it. I would get something to defend myself with and then confront her calmly. If she really was my wife, Alyssa, then she could answer my questions easily. If it went well, then I could explain everything and we'd have a good laugh about it all. If it didn't go well, then, well, I don't know. I just knew that I had to act fast. I moved quickly but quietly through the house, slipping out through the garage. I was looking for anything I could use as defence in case things got messy. My eyes scanned over the tools scattered throughout the garage before finally landing on a crowbar. Perfect. I grabbed the weapon and tucked it into the back of my pants. I kept my hand behind my back, gripped tight on the crowbar as I calmly entered the kitchen where my wife stood, back turned to me, stirring a cup of coffee. Alyssa, my voice must have startled her, or this thing was a good actor. She jumped and turned to face me. Oh, you scared me. Good morning, honey. Honey. My fist gripped tighter around the crowbar behind my back. This creature was messing with me. It had to be. It spoke again. Honey, what's behind your back? There it was again. I was getting pissed off at this sick game now. I ignored its question and asked my own. Alyssa, how did you drive home from work last night if you left your keys behind? The creature, pretending to be my wife, let out a confused whimper. I have to admit, it was convincing. It almost made me feel bad, but I had to hear its answer. Jack, what's going on? Have you been taking your meds? Meds? I don't take any medications. Or do I? I shook my head and focused my thoughts. This thing was trying to mess with me. It was avoiding the question. I had to show it I was serious. I revealed the crowbar from behind my back. Answer the question. The creature pretending to be my wife made another convincing gesture, backing away while its eyes filled with tears. It squeaked out, Jack, I carpool. I've always carpooled. I carpool with Evelyn. Please put the crowbar down, honey. We can talk about whatever's going on. That was all it took. Something inside me cracked when I heard it again. Honey. It was trying to dig into my core by showing me my wife's tears. But it wouldn't work. I wouldn't let it. I let my rage drive me as I lifted my arm and swung the crowbar. Hard into the skull of the creature pretending to be my wife. My veins were filled only with contempt as I dragged it out of the kitchen and into the basement. My head throbbed with ire as I exited the basement alone, slamming it shut behind me and clicking the lock. The entity must have put me to sleep again shortly after because I blacked out and did not wake up until Sunday. I spent the entirety of Sunday trying to block out the sounds from the basement my wife's voice pleading with me to let her out, begging me to get help, but I knew it was only her voice and not really her words. I knew she belonged to something else now. I knew it was only trying to trick me into opening the door so it could kill me, or whatever it had planned. When it was quiet, I spent that time trying to decide what I should do. I spent time online trying to find any solution that didn't involve killing my wife. I held on to hope that maybe I could save her from this thing without taking her life with it. Most of Sunday was a blur otherwise. I woke up on Monday to the sound of knocking at my door. Groggy, I rolled over, grabbed my phone and checked the time. It was 8.34am. 
I opened my doorbell app and checked the camera. It was a face I thought I recognised, but I couldn't put a name to. I crawled out of bed, made my way through the living room and pulled the front door open. A woman stood there, looking confused and impatient. I must have looked like shit. She didn't speak first, so I did. I'm sorry, it's been a long weekend. Who are you? My voice came out raspy from my dry throat. Her impatient look morphed into one of concern. She answered, I'm Evelyn. I'm here to pick Alyssa up for work. She waited for my response, but it never came. She swallowed, looking more uneasy now. Usually she's ready by now, but I've been waiting outside for 30 minutes and she's not answering her phone or anything.